A new word is asymptotes. We're going to do vertical asymptotes first. You have your rational function of one polynomial divided by another polynomial. Vertical asymptotes are going to look like x equals a. If you remember from lines, if x equals a number, this is going to be a vertical line. So the vertical line will have the x value always a. So vertical line, here's an example, that's a vertical line. And your x value is going to be the same. And you need to make sure this a makes q of x equal to zero. So when you plug in a, you should get q of a equals zero. Now something weird can happen if you get zero over zero. So vertical asymptotes definitely happen when denominator is zero and the numerator is not zero. An easy way to think about it, you get zero divided by, or not zero divided by zero. So dividing by zero is bad. Funky things happen when you have zero over zero. We'll look at that, but this is the sort of easy, easier case. You get not zero divided by zero. That's bad, and that would be a vertical asymptote, and the equation is going to be x equals a. Now we talked about multiplicities. If your multiplicity is even, you have a bounce. Multiplicity is odd, you're going to get a cross. What is bouncing across when it comes to asymptotes? We'll do that in chapter 4.2. We're in 4.1 right now. But 4.2, we're going to get into graphing. So we'll see bouncing versus crossing. Now, unfortunately, if you get 0 over 0, things are a little more complicated. So if q of a is 0 and p of a also equals 0, we have to look a little bit further. So you could get a vertical asymptote. How does that happen? There's two ways to look at it. One of them, if you just consider multiplicities, basically the bottom zero has a larger multiplicity. I like to think of this as the denominator wins. So if the bottom zero has larger multiplicity, you get your vertical asymptote. Another way to see it happening, if x is getting closer to a and your function value, r of x is getting closer to either infinity or negative infinity, then you have a vertical asymptote. You can also have a hole in the graph. Now, we'll look at graph, what the actual graphs look like, but what a hole is going to look like, instead of your graph just continuing on, there'll just be a single, like somebody took out just a single point on the graph. So this is what a hole will look like. You'll have a graph, and there'll just be a hole cut in it. How does a hole happen? If the multiplicities are equal, so top zero and bottom zero, um, have the same multiplicity. Also, if the top zero has a larger multiplicity, you'll have a hole. If the top zero has a larger multiplicity, your hole, the y value of the hole, will also be zero. Um, on your final exam, I definitely will stay away from the zero over zeros. This will only happen on your homeworks and possibly a quiz. So you're, it's a little bit tr too tricky to put on a final exam, so I'm going to keep this off of a final. And if you don't like multiplicities, you can also think when x is close to a, r of x does, uh, gets close to a number. Not infinity or negative infinity. It doesn't keep getting uh, as, as large or small as possible. It gets close to a number.